Hello, this is Jim McKeith. Someone requested that I create a short demo showing how to create a simple REST client application and deploy it to iOS and Android within five minutes. So that's what I'm going to do here. I have my iPhone 6 Plus running iOS 9.1 and my Nexus 5 running Marshmallow. This here is Sync Timer. It's a little short app or a little quick small app I wrote in Tin Seattle that uses app tethering so that when I start it here in Windows, where I'm running the IDE, when I switch back to the OS X host to show it running on my devices, the app running on my devices, you can see the timer stays in sync. Really simple with app tethering, a little timer on there just sends the time back and forth. Let's go ahead and get started. New multi-device application. Now the service I'm going to connect to is called Spitcast. Spitcast is a surf forecast website that happens to have a REST API. So I'm going to copy that link address here and go into the REST debugger. So the REST debugger lets me prototype this really quick. So I'm going to paste the endpoint in there, connect to it, and then go to the tabular data tab to see that it's pulling the data down and this is showing it in data step format. So copy these components to the clipboard. The cool thing is this will actually work with a more complicated REST service as well, but this makes for a quick, easy demo. So I'm going to put down something to display this. I'll use a list view and we'll align the list view to client. Now we're going to use live bindings. Now in order for the fields to show up in the mem table, I have to execute the REST request. So I'll go over here to REST request, execute, it says 200 OK, and so now we have fields in our FD mem table. So I'm going to connect this to sync to the list view, and I want to be able to preview this without those non-visual components, so let's hide those. And we'll say we want the spot name to show up in the item text, and the county name to show up in the header. OK, really simple there. So now we do need to write one line of code. So I'm going to go to here to the form, go to the create event, and we'll say rest request dot execute. There we go. So now we can quickly prototype this on Windows. Rest client. Yes, we'll replace it. And here it is running on Windows. Quick turnaround time. Got it all done here within two minutes. So now let's deploy it to Android. All I have to do is change the target to Android. It already sees my Nexus 5 and I'm going to hit compile and run. Now I'm going to speed the video up at this point just because you don't need to see the actual compilation process. The timer will continue to run so you know that the time's all good. Although I will point out that the um, compiler and deployment process seems to run slower when I'm actually using the video recording. So if you run this on your machine, which I encourage you to do, you'll see that it's much, much faster. And there it is running on Android. We're about three minutes now, so let's go for iOS. So in order to deploy this on iOS, and just change here to, I will say 64-bit iOS device, I have to make a change to the deployment. And the reason is in iOS 9, Apple said that you have to connect to an HTTPS service. And if you don't, you have to make a modification to your info P list. And since Spitcast is not using a uh, HTTPS, I have to come in here and add this new one, custom info P list. And I'm just going to add this info P list that I created ahead of time to do that. So you notice as soon as I switched to iOS 64, it connected to my Mac to see my iPhone 6 Plus is connected, which is cleverly named iPhone 6 Plus Plus. And now it's compiling and deploying to my iPhone 6 Plus. Now, while that's doing that, I'll show you. This is the blog post that David and I put together. Explains that Apple required this change and how to modify your info P list. And you can do it for either all arbitrary endpoints or just if you want to do like the app analytics because it's not using HTTPS yet. So again, I'll go ahead and speed this up so you don't have to watch the whole compile process. And we'll see it as it deploys to the iPhone 6 Plus. Okay, so it took me five and a half minutes to build and deploy it to both, I guess, three platforms. I could do OS 10 as well, but that would just take another second. And uh, so, yeah, just over five minutes. Uh, that includes explaining it and 
like I said, the compile seems to take a little bit longer. Maybe it's just I notice it more when I'm recording. But there you go. Uh, built and deployed to both platforms in five and a half minutes.